Hello everyone, um, welcome to my hobby cave. Um, this is the first of hopefully a few uh, videos that I'm making for YouTube just so that I can share some of my uh, experiences with the hobby of uh, miniature painting. So um, what I'm going to do today is um, go through a number of products that I was sent by uh, Army Painter. Uh, I've been using some Army paint products for quite a long time. I've got a number of their uh, paints on my rack behind me and uh, they were they were kind of sent me just a, a few samples of products just to try out and uh, hopefully this will be um, useful for you guys. So uh, what I've got on my uh, table, um, I've got a couple of colour primers. Uh, I've not used colour primers before but I'll go into a bit more of that in a bit. I've got uh, one of their hardened leather speed paints, uh, one to try out, a nice proper bottle, and something a bit more interesting. I've got this uh, this uh, kit, if you like, part of their Game Master series, designed to be a kit uh, for um, players of tabletop games. Uh, you can get everything in one go, it's got paints in there, it's got models in there and possibly some of the bits and pieces, but uh, we'll, we'll see shortly. So yeah, let's, uh, let's do it. Okay, so let's start off with uh, the primers. So what I've got here are a couple of the spray primers. Uh, these are uh, colour primers as opposed to the normal kind of black and white primers you may uh, be used to. Um, this particular one is Hydra Turquoise, something to do with Alpha Region, and um, this one is Oak Brown. So let's go into a little bit about what primers are and what, what they are traditionally used for and what, what's really going on here. Um, traditionally, uh, most, uh, most of you guys out there are probably using these sorts of primers you've got the the brush on style so this is the Vallejo surface primer uh, comes in a uh, 60 mil bottle this particular one uh, army painter uh, do their own uh, series this is called an air primer you can use it by brush it's just a little bit thin um, so as, as I mentioned these can be either brushed on or uh, airbrushed on uh, a lot of you will be using um, company name primer so citadel and their skull white and i think i think this might have been superseded by a different color or, or color name but essentially it's a white primer now um ordinarily traditionally primers yeah, serve two purposes one is to cover the model so if you look at my uh this is my forge world perturabo who's um, who's partly built they obviously come as bare plastic or as in this case resin uh, you may have metal miniatures as well so what the primer does is it obviously puts down a, a base coat on there to uh, for subsequent colors um, so if you're painting a, a nice uh, bright blue miniature for example you don't want to start with a gray you may want to start with a darker color and work your way up to a lighter color uh, the other important thing for a primer is that it provides a keying layer. So if you put uh, um, a normal paint onto plastic or resin at or metal, uh, it's more likely to, to come off a braid. So what the primers do is to pro uh, provide a kind of robust interface between the paint layer and the base material. So that's what these are supposed to do and they do that to different levels i've found vallejo once you've given it a good day to cure uh dry off uh, it's pretty good i found the army painter stuff not so good in that area it's more just a thin paint really uh, i found this this old citadel stuff to be really good it's got some some nasty stuff in there which seems to key very well to the base there personally i use Plain old bog standard automotive primers. This one's from Alphas, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, you can get similar things. I know there are other companies like Krylon. Uh, these just work a treat, highly pigmented. 
and they're, they're uh, self-leveling to a certain extent. They, you, you, you think it looks uh, like some of the detail has been lost. When it dries up, it, it, it really kind of uh, dries off to a lovely thin uh, layer. I don't have any examples at the moment, but I possibly do. Um, oh, in fact, let's, uh, let's uh, dig out my Perturabo base and you might see, excuse the noise, so I've got a, uh, a base in here which has been primed in half its black and you won't be able to see the uh, details of that because the camera is not really playing ball but uh, it, it's, it's really well adhered and very happy with that. So that's really what a primer is. Um, so let's have a look at what Army Painter are, uh, are providing. So let's uh, let's have a look at the uh, the turquoise. Uh, they come. Shush. Shush. That's Alexa. Sorry about that. So first of all, this comes with a. Uh, well, it's sealed. Now, how the hell do I get this this thing off? Okay, it seems to have a little tab on it or something, which I can't get off. No, I'm going to need a screwdriver or something maybe to get in there. Also good, do I have a screwdriver in here? I doubt it. Bear with me. Right. Okay. I'm back. <laughs> Getting the lid off was a bit of fun. What, what were they thinking? Uh, no, the uh, Halfords ones aren't this well. You're supposed to put your screwdriver into this little tab and then give it a twist, and that's supposed to break the seal, but it but it simply doesn't. Um, it just mangles the uh, cap. So I'm going to brute force my way through this, and then pull the lid off. Oh, that's a load of crap. Okay, so what was the point of that? No idea, it's to stop. Uh, uh, children get coughed. All right, whatever. Um, not massively impressed by that. Why make it that difficult? Okay. So what I need are a few test minis in my little box of tricks. Uh, I have a couple of uh, pre-primed little figures. Uh, you probably can't see this. Then. Right, back again. Okay, that was a bit of fun. I was trying to figure out why the camera is not changing focus. It kind of does if it wants to, up to about there. So you have to bear with me. I've got a teeny little figure here, which I'm going to... Uh... These are already uh, primed in, um, in a white, so maybe I'll, I'll pick something that is completely bare naked, so to speak. Although I've been quite efficient and uh, primed all of these already. No, no, I've got an old, I've got an old marine in here. My, it's my box of shame. So I've got a couple of. Uh, here we go. This is a uh, plain metal figure. Don't worry about what it looks like. And I'm going to give it a really good spray. What? After a bit of shaky shaky, all TV rattle cans are real good spray. Strangely enough, doesn't feel like uh, there's an awful lot in there. Strange. Oh, okay. That's that. And the uh, puzzle's come up. Ooh. Now, I've got the window open, so I'm happy to uh, do a little bit of a spray in here. Add to all that. Um, so, I'm just going to go off screen a little bit. Right, okay, so I've given it, given it just the lightest spray. And I'll tell you what. Okay, so things I'm looking out for, obviously uh, coverage, and I've given it a very light spray. It's always better to do uh, two light coats as opposed to one thick one. But for this, I'm not too worried. Uh, coverage on this is excellent. I mean, very pigmented. I didn't shake it an awful lot, so you might expect some of the uh, solvents to uh, split out but although I'll, I'll uh, 
pop in a uh, couple of pictures into the video if we get a moment. That is really very pigmented. Uh, other things I'm looking out for are um, the orange peeling. Um, no, there isn't any. No orange peeling whatsoever, which is really very good. Uh, it means that the, um, it's all mixed up very well and it's adhering to the, the, bare, the bare metal. And it's not run at all either. I'm, uh, I'm actually very impressed by this. Okay, so let's, uh, let's pop this fella to the stand. I'm gonna pick out another one. So what sort of I got here? I've got a teeny little character. I think this might have been uh, one of my hassle-free freebies. I think it is. So she can be uh, sacrificed for this exercise. You know, oh, look at her. Okay, okay. So again, bear with me. Just going off camera, I'm gonna give it a light spray. Shaky, shaky. Okay, again, really quick light spray. Let's have a look at this one. Okay, so this one appears to be a little bit different. I'm gonna give it another, give it another squeeze. Funnily enough, maybe I didn't shake it enough. This one, this one doesn't want to cover as well. Hmm. Maybe. I really had to get a lot more on this to get it to uh, do its stuff. It smells nice too. Um, okay, slightly strange, but okay, I've had to flood this one a little bit more than I would like. Let's let them uh, dry off a little bit. In the meantime, I can play around with some of the other products. We'll come back to those. So this one was the, uh, what color was this? What color was this? Hey, you know what? The can only says the colour on the bottom, not the can itself. So you're probably going to get the uh, lids mixed up. Okay, that's nice. Army painter, put the paint colour on the can because you'll probably get the lids mixed up. Sorry, uh, that's typical army painter stuff. It kind of sometimes. Look at this. Uh, okay. No, I can't even get that lid back on. Oh, good grief. To work out. Okay, fine. Next one. Hardened leather speed paint. Now, there's a bit of a uh, bit of a thing going on for uh, speed painting contrast paint, the uh, dreaded uh, slap chop method, which was a joke. Don't take it too seriously. Um, so I'm going to stick this on. Uh, a primed white mini to see what it does. Now, I'm not a uh, speed painter. I'm a, uh, more of a display painter, so I do occasionally use contrast paints, but uh, not an awful lot, so bear with me. I'm going to uh, grab a well palette, put a few drops of this in, and see what happens. Giving it a bit of a shake, quite thick and 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 quite dark. Then, if you can uh, see that, it's uh, it seems a little bit different. To uh, let's see if I can grab a GW contrast. Again, give that a shake because everything's anything settled out. Let's have a look. Has it, has it actually changed a different consistency? No, I think the colour's about the same, to be honest. Maybe the uh, Army Painter stuff feels a little bit thicker. Maybe. Let's not worry about that. So I'm going to... Uh, lost my tissue, but so I'm just going to dry on the top. Right. 
pick up some of this contrast gear and then uh, slap it on as they say oh yeah nicely pigmented it, it, it does tend to want to uh, flow into the cracks which is probably a good thing it's not drying too quickly okay picking up a few bubbles of this is actually really good it's giving me um, now it's a shame that it give me something uh, a little brighter just, I'm just uh, jobbing this on I think the the real benefit of these contract paints is the contrast style paints is uh, they do retain a lot of the vivid color so if you had uh, if you have reds and blues yellows you can really do some lovely vivid effects and the browns are but uh, hey, this is this is really nice. This is really nice. I like that a lot. I've kind of instantly put a really lovely kind of mahogany skin tone together. Uh, again, I don't have a uh, close-up camera, but I'll see if I can put some uh, images up. Uh, but that is really nice. Um, I think for a tabletop standard or uh, something slightly better this is great stuff you know what i'm going to do i'm going to uh, pick out another one of my uh, test pieces and compare that with a uh, games workshop contrast now do i have a brown Brown. I do not have a brown. I've got greens. I've got black. But well, you know what? Let's do. Let's do black. Let's end up grey. Why not? In fact, I've already got the blue open. Um, I've got a few drops of blue in there. Let's give it a go. Okay, that's not enough. Dippy dippy. Not exactly doing slap chop here. Thankfully. I'm going to just flood the whole mini with blue. The GW stuff is very similar. I would say possibly it's a little less thick. So it's tending to flow into all the nooks and crannies. Hmm. That's the only significant observation but I'm basically just chucking it in there and it's uh, okay so I've just chucked that on I know this is not particularly a spectator sport because I've not got the uh, close-in video but I hopefully you can uh, see the result hmm I know the minis are different, but I slightly prefer the Army Painter stuff. For some reason, the GW stuff doesn't spread around the surface quite as well. That could be the mini type that I've got. But uh, I don't know if you can see any of that. I mean, I should have thought about this more closely, really. Yeah. Um, there you go. Um, I would say that the Army Painter stuff, in final result, is better than the um, Games Workshop result. And uh, that's because it's given a generally a smoother result. Uh, Games Workshop is a little bit more blotchy, maybe. Maybe that's the right word. So, yeah, thumbs up with that. Let's see if the, um, the primers have started to uh, go off a little bit. Which they have. Yeah, okay, so even the, the, the brown has, uh, has now, it's kind of contracted a little bit, so to speak. It's not, it doesn't look like it's pulled. So it's certainly doing its job. I think the, the solvents have, have uh, dried off and formed quite a nice 
the layer. I mean, to be honest, that brown might have been a little bit inconsistent because I hadn't even prepped the minis. I hadn't washed them or, or, uh, or anything. Um, but, so this is literally primed on, on metal. Okay, so um, so far so good. I think Army Painter's making a pretty good show of it. I'm just going to uh, clear up some of this mess. We'll move up open bottles. Right, let's take a break before I get into the next bit. Right there, I'm back. So I've actually changed the lens on my camera because the old one was a little bit poop. So let's see if, uh, if it'll pick up these. Oh, that's better, isn't it? I was trying to focus. Furious, just see how close I can get it before it loses focus. That's pretty good, right? Look at these fellas. So there they are, a couple of little examples which I've uh, which I've based up. Um, they look really good. Um, maybe at the end of this, I'll test their durability by giving them a bit of a, a bit of a scratch. And these are the results of the contrast paints. I keep calling them contrast. Maybe I shouldn't. What I'd say is for these colours anyway. Let's see if we can get the uh, the light over a little bit more. Come on, here we go. Focus, focus. There we go. Um, the Army Painter Speed Paint is actually significantly better than the Games Workshop Contrast Paint. It's much better. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a bit of a fan actually. I might, uh, if there are some brighter colours, I would certainly consider those. Really good. Okay. Um, now the reason I'm close in now is because I want to open this bad boy. I don't know really much about this, so I'm really happy to uh, give this a go. Let's get my uh, sort of blade out. Let's get this shrink. This is my first real unboxing video ever, really. So let's get all this off. Get this off. I would chuck it in the bin, but it's over there. I'm gonna chuck it behind me, over my shoulder. All right. Let's have a look at the uh, front. Games, the Games Master Character Starter Role Playing Paint Set. So this is like an all-in-one set for those of you who are into D&D, uh, &D, I would have thought. We've got the... On the front, we've got a Dwarf Cleric, Wood Elf Ranger, Human Rogue, Human Fighter, and... Uh, Tiefling Warlock. I don't know what that is. That's the front on the back. It shows you some examples of how they can be painting, contents, 20 12 mil paints, interesting. One brush and who knows what else. Um, let's, uh, let's have a look. And here we go. Oh, it's all it's all in separate trays. Interesting, get a little painting guide. Something's just fallen on the floor. I don't know what that was. I'm trying to be as careful as I can. Okay, whoa, okay, another tray. I think. Oh, that is it. Let's see what fell on the floor. Oh, I know what it was. Excuse my head. It's, um, it's just a little plastic protector for the brush. That wasn't, that wasn't even on. Oh, sorry. Um, right. First impressions. Okay, you seem to have a lot of stuff in here. You've got one sprue with five individual figures, um, plastic, and they are actually, hang on a second, they're all in one piece. Apart from the odd bit, they've made this as easy as possible. Uh, for example, this one, which I think, what is that? Excuse me. Yeah, so some of these, for the human rogue and uh, possibly whatever that is, it's a bit missing. Some of these are literally one piece, nothing to do. You just cut it out and stick it on the base. Um, so ni nice and simple, I must say. I've got to adjust the lighting a little bit. A bit more light. Right, um, yeah, nice sprue, all the bits and pieces, all ready to go, one piece, 
uh, push assembly, bit of super glue, job done. This is really is ideal for um, for starters. If, you, if you're not, if you're not really into miniature painting, this would be a great way in. Now, okay, so what have we got here then? All sorts of bits and pieces, all different paints. Right up my street. Oh dear. Okay. Got some greys, greys undercoat grey, one skin tone, the green, yellow, orange, red, uh, a nice uh, turquoise. Really, I won't go through the whole lot. There's a, there's a bone colour. Oh, actually, I might go through the whole lot. A metallic, jolly good. A brown. Another skin, a couple of skins, that's good. Uh, purple. Another brown. Another brown here. We've got white, another white. Oh, that's the first white. Uh, a blue. A flesh wash, another metallic, this time a golden metallic, chaotic black, that's uh, one of the basic colours, and another wash, a, looks like a, a dark wash. So really, this is a really good starter kit. Um, it's got more than the basics. Uh, I kind of feel like it could have done with another green, but you can always add a little bit of yellow to that if you want to. Uh, Brighten up, a bit of blue, darken it back down. Uh, there's a red, orange, yellow, two flesh tones. There's a nice bone color there. That's uh, obviously uh, really useful. Turquoisey color, blue, purple. Some nice, some nice uh, selection. I say that it only appears to be slightly weak in the in the greens, maybe a couple of browns. But overall, really nice. Couple of washes to work on the metallics and the other colours. Um, great. So, and then you've got the Games Master Starter Brush, uh, which appears to be a synthetic. And if I had to uh, give it a bit of a go, you know what, I'm going to try a little bit of contrast on this, see how it flows from the brush. Seems to be pretty decent starter brush. Um, I think they've selected kind of the right size. Seems to flow all right. It's not really got a great tip at all. Uh, initially, it's it's gonna you're gonna get some a little bit of detail, but looking at the miniatures, they're not massively detailed, I guess. And the one actually, you know what? So I would say the brush is fairly weak, but I'm not I'm not expecting a. A Kalinsky sable in a starter brush. Um, it probably wasted on a complete beginner, I would have thought anyway. So uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get my trusty well palette out and uh, try a couple of these paints. So I'm gonna give it a shake. Oh, well, it's worth pointing out the size, um, comparing it to a Vallejo, which is all, right, let's give it a shake. Um, there we go. So these are, I think these are 17 mil. Does it even say on here? There we go, 17 mil. And these are 12 mil. So yeah, there are, there are a lot smaller. Yeah, and I, but for a starter set, I think it's brilliant. They managed to get a wider variety of colors rather than the, the volume. And I think for a beginner, that's great. I mean, to be honest, this will probably last me the rest of my life, whatever that color is. Um, and I'm assuming that these are just the standard, um, Standard army painter paints. They've got agitators in, dropper bottles. Very nice. Don't actually like dropper bottles, but I don't want to rock the boat at this stage. And uh, let's have a look. Okay, I'm going to try on the back of this board to see how pigmented they are. Okay. And uh, yeah, pretty standard for army painter, not massively pigmented. A little bit gloopy, to be honest. I think that these paints are actually cheaper versions of their regular paints. Let's see if I can prove or disprove that. And I've got a... This is an Army Painter War Paints uh, Dorado Skin Colour. So that, that red felt not a lot of fun, to 
be honest. It's kind of a little bit gloopy, not very pigmented. A couple of layers, it just kind of made more of a mess rather than uh, rather than colouring it. However, I won't use their normal paints for a while. Look at this. It bulges out. It's disgusting. I hate bulges. No control. Right, so sorry for the interruption. It had a, a technical malfunction with my uh, microphone. Uh, I lost all the audio, so I'm just uh, going to recap on the stuff that I was doing. Now, I was busy criticising dropper bottles when I left you guys, I think. A bit of a whinge. But I did <clears throat> try out a number of the paints. You can see samples on the bottom of that box there. There you go. So I'm just going to run through what I found. The red was decidedly average. Um, pretty poor coverage and I don't know, it seems to have dried all right, but it wasn't very nice to use it. It felt a bit gloopy, it's difficult to describe. The blue was just dreadful. It was so bad, I thought I'd done something wrong. This is really not fit as a miniature paint. This is a... Uh, kids hobby paint from to be brutally honest terrible no use whatsoever having said that a lot of blues are like that i don't know why um the yellow was really nice so they got the pigmentation just right the texture was a lot better it thinned pretty well that was a good paint um looking at all the uh flesh tones compared it against the the regular uh, army painter range uh really quite quite variable if i get it a bit closer uh, this is the normal paint here. Some of the uh, these Game Master paints had fairly similar co uh, coverage. And in fact, I'd say that the flesh tones in the set are actually pretty good. So I actually recommend them. Metallics were a bit of hit and miss in so much as... Um, I want the metallic. There's the metallic. Um, they're actually quite nicely pigmented. And give a last bit of uh, you can see a little it's reflecting quite nicely so the the, the metallic flecks in here are really nice and fine um, they're not massively pigmented as in you probably need a couple of coats to get it really nice but uh, they're actually pretty good um, the flesh wash which I've tried on one of my I don't know how close I can get this one uh, I've tried this on a little, uh, little nude lady over here um, actually, not too bad. Um, I'd say it's uh, the, the interesting, interesting about the flesh wash here is it's got a s slightly odd coloration. It's not particularly fleshy, it's more brown, but okay. So, in summary, it's a bit of a mixed bag. I'd say that as a whole, the paints are extremely variable. Some are quite good, some of them are dreadful. Um, there, I I would say that their quality in general is a little bit lower than their normal uh, paint series. I just get the feeling they've kind of made them to a price. Um, speaking of price, is the set worth it? Now, where did I put the box? It's down here. So there you go. Is it worth buying this uh, this set? Um, this retails in the UK for £44, um, and the way it's advertised, you get free miniatures. Uh, that's a bit strange because, uh, you know, the paints by themselves are barely worth it. So are they worth it? So if you were to buy each one of these 20 paints, inks, uh, metallics, uh, it'll probably cost you, what, £2, £2.50 a bottle, something like that. If that's, I think that's roughly what they're retailing for. So that's your 40, 45 pounds here uh, right there but they're 17 mil bottles these are 12 mil probably worth pound pound 50 something like that uh, that's 20 30 pounds worth of paint that's my that's my recommendation there um, looking at the free minis are probably worth a few pounds maybe a bit of fiver uh, quid for the brush technically this set isn't worth it but to do something equivalent um, is going to cost you a lot more it's also worth noting that in this set you get a few brochures uh, this is the standard kind of 
army painter guide. It's got some sales pitch, some how to's. The interesting one in here is that the how to paint. This is actually pretty good for a complete novice. It's got some, uh, it's got a painting guide, assembly guide, it looks pretty good. The important thing uh, I, for me is that there are QR codes for each of the figures. You can go away, go to the website and uh, get a, a video tutorial how to paint them. I think that's a really good idea. Overall, I think you're paying a bit of a premium for quite a nice little box set. I think this is gonna be ideal for a complete novice. Uh, anything more than that is probably not worth it uh, because the quality of the paints are questionable, although army painter paints are a bit questionable anyway. Um, so just bear that in mind. So yeah, that's it. It's uh, close to being an excellent set, but no cigar. Um, okay. So that's it, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully this has been a useful review of a number of Army Painter products. Um, give me a thumbs up if you found it useful. If you want to know anything else, um, stick a comment down below. Feel free to ask any questions. Cheers.